We've been invaded by killer bees, y'all. <sighs> So that's right, we were invaded by bees. You were there firsthand, weren't you? Yeah, so I was getting ready to start working on the outside of the shed, finishing off the walls with this adobe technique, and I hear this buzzing sound. And we're all too familiar with that, right? We get those random swarms coming through. We get swarms passing through, but this sounded like it wasn't passing through, it was kind of lingering. So I went out to check it out and I saw a cloud of bees hovering over the shed and then they kind of gathered on one side of the shed and they bunched up and then they made their way into a cavity under the shed floor. So then we were definitely faced with a problem. You're working inside the shed, I'm working outside the shed, Knowing that there are killer bees in Arizona, we're thinking, is this gonna be safe to be this close to them? We decided to do a little research. We had to get that research done because what are we dealing with exactly? You know, are these gonna be aggressive? Are they gonna attack us while we're out here trying to work? What we found is, they're all killer bees! Pretty much. According to the University of Arizona, if you find a wild honeybee, it's pretty safe to assume that it is an Africanized variety. They're commonly known as killer bees. What they actually are, are a hybrid honeybee. They're a mix of bees from South Africa, as well as the European honeybees. And this strain of bees was created back in the 1950s. The 50s? It's back in all the uh, big sci-fi movie days with all the Atomic Age movies, eh? And that's when they're creating the killer bees. It was almost like the plot of some kind of weird sci-fi horror movie. Picture this. A lab somewhere deep in Brazil where they're taking bees, hybridizing them to create a super bee, if you will. But then an accident happened and those bees escaped traveling north and spreading at incredibly fast rates. Gah! And that's pretty close to how it happened. A biologist was crossbreeding these bees, trying to produce a strain that would produce more honey and be more adapted to the tropical climate. So they had them in an apiary in Brazil when some swarms escaped from their quarantine and they started breeding with the local bees and swarms just started spreading quickly throughout South America. By the early 1990s, these types of bees were found in the southern part of the United States. So these are one of the most notorious invasive species in the Americas. I got it, the notorious AHB. And the reason why they are so good at kind of overtaking the European hives and spreading so well is because of certain traits that they have. So they can sometimes take over a weakened hive that has a European queen and kill the queen and replace it with their own Africanized queen and take over that hive. But what's more common is Actually, when a queen bee is in her mating flight, the Africanized drones will mate with her and produce that hybrid offspring. They're able to do that because they are, they're stronger, they're faster. So these Africanized bees, they look pretty similar to the European bees. So it's hard to tell them apart. They do tend to be a little bit smaller and darker in Europe. There's been a long tradition of beekeeping. Some of those bees have been selectively bred over centuries to be more docile and uh, more suitable to keeping around humans and other animals. In Africa, 
in the past there wasn't a tradition of beekeeping. You know, Africa's tough. There's a lot of tough predators there. If you know what a honey badger is, that's just one of the things that bees contend with down there. African bees were adapted to be more defensive. They're more easily alarmed by things and they're just more on guard. And they can chase people or animals. I've heard a quarter mile or more. So it definitely poses some risks. Once we knew a little bit more about the Africanized bees. We knew we had to act and we had to act fast. But we are not experienced beekeepers. We don't have a lot of tools, equipment, resources. Or any. Or experience or knowledge. So we decided to call in a professional. I'm here with my buddy Jim and we're out here in beautiful Cochise County. Jim called us up because he had a beehive. Our, these are not our grandfather's bees. All of the bees in the state of Arizona and further are Africanized killer bees done deal. We race on out, meet Jim, he shows us where the shed is, where the bees were, and we got to looking around and we found another hive. So uh, we got rid of two hives for Jim. Uh, but you've been doing this for a while now, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, I've been doing it for uh, about 30 years. I was doing, uh, I was keeping bees before Africanization and had about between 30 and 40 hives various times. And they were European, they were nice bees. By the late 90s, done deal, over. You can't, they're all Africanized, all killer bees. It's gotten so bad that every week in Cochise County in the summer, they kill a dog, a horse, or a goat. Now these bees though, these killer bees, they make up to twice as much honey. They're industrious as hell. So they're disease resistant, they're tough as nails. They do every job a European bee does times 10. They make twice as much honey. They swarm more often, propagate the area with bees, uh, and they defend the hive better. That's our issue, and it's a huge issue. Mr. Reed Booth, thank you so much for, uh, for all your help here today. Hey, it was a pleasure to meet you, buddy. Come on into Bisbee and say hi. We'll leave a link down to his channel down below. We'll put all of his information down below. If you're in Bisbee, check out his shop. Hell yeah. Uh, I've been there the other day, tasted some of those honeys. Magnificent. And we make them all right in Bisbee, right at the ranch. So uh, come on down to Cochise County. It's a, it is really the Wild West, isn't it? <laughs> it it literally is. is the last hurrah. It's the Wild West. Jim, it was an absolute pleasure to meet you, buddy. And uh, yeah, we're glad nobody got hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Thank all you right. very much. Are you guys out there? Beehive yourselves. So after Reed's visit, how are you feeling? What are your thoughts? Well, to be honest, I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little bit bummed out. I guess it's kind of unfortunate that the bees made their home in an inconvenient and possibly unsafe place for us. Uh, I feel like we weren't fully prepared. Yeah, I kind of wish things would have turned out a little differently, uh, but it was a really eye-opening experience for me. Just knowing some of the risks that these Africanized bees uh, have been in the area and uh, learning more about them. But I think there's a unique opportunity here. I know there's beekeepers in the South that actually prefer the Africanized varieties because they can produce a lot more honey. They're very good pollinators and they are resistant to some parasites, fungal diseases, and Things like the colony collapse disorder. In the news, you hear a lot about the bees dying and about how bees, the bee population is dwindling. Well, these bees are perhaps an answer to some of these things. It's all about finding a way to work with nature. We've read about places like in Puerto Rico and Mexico where beekeepers are selectively breeding the Africanized bees that might be a good way to go forward, keeping the ones that are a little more docile and keeping the traits that make these bees stronger, more resilient. <laughs> and maybe a little less angry, am I right? And in the meantime, I think it's important for people to get educated about these bees and how to react around them. Going forward for us, that's what we want to do. Yeah, we definitely want to have bees out here. Maybe we'll end up building a couple of hives, but maybe keep them a safe distance away from from other people and from animals. people and animals. All right, thanks a lot for joining us. This exciting adventure, man.
Killa Bees right here on the off-grid homestead. Can you believe that? If only this could have turned out a little better, that'd be nice. But thanks a lot for joining us. We really appreciate it. Definitely stick around. Join us, same off-grid time, the same off-grid channel. We'll catch you on the next video, everyone.